Hello, welcome to our channel Software Dude. Today we are going to discuss an important topic, uh, which is we are going to discuss seven system design and modeling diagram techniques, right? Uh, as part of interviews or in your day to day job, whenever you are doing any kind of system design or any kind of planning, any kind of anything to do with software uh, development, design, delivery, these are the kind of seven different areas and uh, corresponding diagrams that really help right there is a saying like uh, uh, one picture is equivalent to thousand words right so it really paints a picture uh, if you if you are able to uh, tell the story or tell the system or tell the design in the form of a diagram right and uh, definitely in interviews at least 80 to 85 percent of interviews people who crack at least in the fan companies uh, are able to articulate what they are saying right system design when you are doing you will be thinking about a lot of things right uh, but it is very difficult to actually articulate that if you are writing code or if you are explaining right so you have to understand system design but we generally talk about architecture and component diagrams and we are going to see that but there are seven different types of diagrams which are umls uh, but we often generally neglect those in our day-to-day -day studies but you can see how important these are when you are uh, giving an interview or in your day-to-day -day jobs right so let's get started the first like i mentioned is the architecture diagrams that we do which are also called the component diagrams component diagrams primarily show the components of an application and the dependencies between them which basically form a larger system right uh, it can be a database it can be multiple services it can be async queue it can be uh, it can be another uh, external system that you are calling right it can be a separate cloud system so any any components in your entire architecture like these are the kind of diagrams that go at the top of a system design right uh, if you are doing a system design uh, document the technical architecture is this is the kind of uh, diagrams that you primarily approach which are called component diagrams which are the architecture diagrams the big picture of the entire system broken down into different components which can be a single system or a single service and their interaction between them right so this is very critical whenever you are doing a system design round in any kind of interviews most of the system design rounds talk about some kind of an architecture uh, it can be a database read and you have to implement an api with a compute or say it is a data processing pipeline that you have to build right or it is a reporting system or it's an analytical system a notification system so these all systems will obviously have multiple components to be able to show the components in the form of a end-to-end -end picture with with a call flow and uh, all components and their interaction between them uh, is really helpful right so that is component diagram next is sequence diagram sequence diagram basically shows the interaction and the message flow between different objects or components or say services or resources over a period of time right it basically demonstrates the dynamic behavior of a system so now you if you have built a component or a technical architecture if you want to show that there is say a a, a, a core business logic or say there is an api call that is happening and that is hitting one service then it will go to a router layer then it is going to do go to a first say let's say it is going to hit the api gateway then the load balancer then the uh, core business logic which is your compute can be a lambda or any other compute then that might go to a database that might go to a cache right or read from cache and then read from database whatever it is these are like sequence flow of messages right messages can be in the form of an api call or an async flow and there can be failures there can be repeats there can be grouping right so sequence of flow uh, between uh, multiple systems or between two systems is basically represented via a sequence diagram whenever there is a it, at least during interviews whenever there is a, a question around uh, say a complex business logic right where there are multiple you have defined defined the uh, the component diagram that is the technical architecture but you wants to show the sequence of flow it's not a flow chart it's a sequence diagram of all sequence of how calls or messages are uh, flowing between different systems right what is it returning how will that response be used in the further call right so that is very useful in a uh, can be very 
uh, easily uh, described via a sequence diagram i would highly highly recommend everyone if you are facing that kind of a situation go to a whiteboard and draw a sequence diagram that really helps now the next one is activity diagram activity diagram is kind of a flow diagram like we all know around flow charts so it basically de depicts the the workflow within a system where it shows the sequence of activities decisions branching right concurrency synchronization points so it's a flow chart so it starts from us from a point ends from another point with different branching and decisions that it took uh, in that in that entire activity okay so that's an activity diagram the next one is a state diagram you might not come across a state diagram often state diagrams are mainly represented whenever you your system is say a, a state machine right or uh, it basically models the behavior of an object or a system by specifying different states or events uh, of the system at different points of time and the transition between them right so state diagrams if you are ever designing any kind of a st uh, state machine or any kind of a machine which might have some kind of a might not be an explicit state but that can be a implicit state, uh, state also right and the states the transition between them right can be depicted by a uh, via a uh, state diagram state diagram basically you basically mention the states and what it does in that state and from what state to what state what is the transition flow and on what condition right that is what basically a state diagram represents so if you are at all coming across a system where you are defining a state machine or in, uh, designing a state machine of some kind uh, definitely use a state diagram to to articulate how the state transitions will happen right so the next uh, diagram is a use case diagram this is might not be needed in the system design specifically but this is very useful to define the product or a behavior of a system right this is between the interaction between actors and the system right it basically represents the functionality from a users or from a customers perspective right at the end of the day whatever system you are building you have to understand the use case the functionality the feature that you are building right to articulate that that uh, feature or functionality diagrammatically is very critical right there are cases where these are like at a very high level and people who are at a senior position might be asked like staff engineers uh, like senior sds and all will be principal engineers they might be asked around a very complicated one line topic and from there you might have to come across like break it down into different use cases define the use cases and then come to the system design right to define the use cases this is the diagram that you use where you are basically depicting the not only a high level flow but also how the customer or the uh, users of the system different users of the system or personas of the system are interacting with the system that you are building right so that is use case diagram it is primarily facing the product and the behavior of the system next is class diagram class diagram we have been doing a series of videos on object oriented programming and design uh you might be well aware of what a class diagram is basically it's a static structure of a system which basically uh, illustrates the classes their attributes methods and relationships between them right class diagram is not required at a system design level it is at a very low level uh component because when you are talking about code right you are directly talking about how the implementation will work not the system architecture design but uh, when class diagram i mean you might come across many interviews where you are asked around object oriented programming concepts right or uh, systems to design which focus on object oriented side of a uh, of a system right uh, because it will implement on a, it will be implemented on object oriented design pattern right if you have to follow that and if you are doing that class diagrams are very useful i mean you don't have to be as detailed as uh, like the diagram that i have shown but at least showing what is the base class what are the inherent class right? what are the interfaces in the system how they are dependent on one another uh, can really help the uh, the interviewer or say reviewers if of your design to understand how you are thinking about implementing the system this is this goes more uh, uh, this is more helpful than actually implementing if you are able to concretely define your classes your objects methods uh, their functionalities right 
uh, interaction between them writing the code and the pseudo code is just a byproduct you will be able to very easily do that considering obviously you you know what the language and all those stuff uh, but most of the problems that i have seen in interviews uh, is people struggle in defining this uh, the the class diagram itself right i mean they are not able to pictureize how will that flow they talk about some interface all of a sudden people come across and uh, do use over abstraction right or over encapsulation like that is also not clear so you should always start with the diagram and then move to the implementation once it's it's pretty clear so class diagram is very useful uh, from an implementation perspective and last but not the least is a deployment diagram deployment diagram in my experience has been obviously system design architecture component diagram sequence diagrams are important but the most critical where people 90 percent people do not actually understand deployments okay? they do not understand all aspects of deployment everyone understands deployment but there are multiple nuances like ci cd continuous integration continuous deployment wouldn't have been an entire field wouldn't have been there would be hundreds of certifications and careers that are built on that profile right that is because it is a complex thing right not everyone knows that deployment diagrams basically represent the deployment of a software component or artifacts uh, on specific hardware nodes right artifacts in this case can be a code can be a package upgrade can be whatever it is right can be a software uh, a version upgrade or whatever major version upgrade or whatever it is but deployment diagrams it is not just about how the code will flow between say multiple regions multiple hardware nodes like but it is also about what are the steps that happen in each of the deployment um, instance that happens right are you having a fixed wait time right are you having any kind of approval workflows like for example if you are if you are uh, deploying you might want to add a workflow where uh, you only pass you only deploy to the next stage or the next region if all integration tests pass right that's a conditional approval workflow that you have set on a deployment diagram another aspect of deployments is when you say your deployment pipeline is already ready right you already have a system that is serving customer traffic now you are implementing a new feature you are going to release a new feature right how are you how are you how is your deployment uh, pipeline looking like for that feature which has not yet been pushed how are you going to release it are you going to do it in a phase wise fashion are you going to do it in a in a uh, customer segregated fashion are you going to run it first for the integration test then for say 10 percent uh, small customers then medium customers and then go to the large customers right are you going to deploy to one region first and then the next region are you going to deploy to one hardware node which is a small node to test first and then move to a bigger node right these are different aspects of deployment and that is very difficult to explain when you are you are writing a doc right not many people first of all people who are writing the deployment thing has to think of various aspects of deployment but also people who are reviewing might not actually read if you have a like seven or eight page a deployment strategy right i mean that might not be possible and people might not even understand right to give the picture very clearly you might want to depend on a diagrammatic approach and that is where the deployment diagrams are very useful in fact i would even suggest and this might not be again this might be a uh, senior uh, sd like senior uh, engineer kind of a work might not come across if you are starting your career here but uh, generally deployment strategies how a system will behave right across say worldwide if you are launching say a e-commerce website that is available in at least 100 countries or something like that or a social media um, uh, uh, network like facebook or twitter right uh, how will you operate those and how will your software release feature you must have seen google and apple and facebook and they all release these kind of softwares which are first release to a specific region and then available to another region then available to another region right now that's a deployment that's a pipeline that they have right that that is a plan that they do now what do they do exactly internally and how to make that concretely feasible and concretely like comprehensible for everyone who is working on that project so that they are aware that this is how our deployment strategy is going to be right so that is deployment diagram that those are all the there are multiple other diagrams multiple other uml modeling uh, diagrams also that are available but these are seven most critical in my experience and i would definitely suggest at least for interviews 
you can speak you can write code but people who are able to articulate in a diagrammatic approach their thought on a whiteboard right are the people who succeed more often than not because that's very clear and now implementation and writing the pseudo code or writing a compilable code might just be a byproduct you might be able to do that if this is clear right so hopefully this was useful thanks for watching